This clip is really will be about two scientists. Um, uh, the first will be uh, Linus Pauling, uh, uh, responsible for the Pauling electronegativity series. And um, uh, I don't know any stories about uh, Professor Pauling, uh, but I like these two pictures that I found on, on the web very much. Uh, put, in, uh, put into chat, he's got a things on the blackboards behind him. Do you find them... Um, the, what the the work that he's describing does it look complicated or simple just put in chat what you're thinking is does it look complicated or simple i mean of course it's science to to my eyes you know i'm looking at the one on the left uh, potassium calcium scandium titanium it's just the fourth row of the periodic table to me as a chemist it feels simple and uh i have the same sensation when i look at the stuff on the right and i do think that linus pauling looked at things very simply, but he was able always to find profound consequences. Uh, consequences from uh, quasi-crystals, the picture on the left is a theory of magnetism that he created. Uh, on the right, he started the field of protein folding. He discovered the alpha helix. Okay, that's one gentleman. And the second uh, scientist I'd like to talk about is in conjunction with valence shell electron pair repulsion, VSCPR which is the model we use to, to know uh, this, uh, uncover molecular shape. And um, the person, uh, the scientist I'd like to talk about is Larry Bartel, who is not the man who, uh, the scientist who made valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. He's the scientist who discovered in the 1960s that valence shell electron pair repulsion doesn't have anything really to do with electron pair repulsion. And it has everything to do with a theory called MO theory, molecular orbital theory, which therefore is going to be one of the major topics uh, in the last portion of this course. And um, I, I did meet Professor Bartel, and uh, I, I hope you, uh, you don't mind if I talk a few minutes about my meeting for him, with him, because they, they had a huge effect on me. Um, uh, and I really only met him, maybe talked to him maybe three times in my life. Um, the... Um, the, the um, <clears throat> uh, I was a, a, a young assistant professor at the University of Michigan. Larry Bartel was the uh, great, great chemist in the department. And uh, I had just been informed by the chair of the department that it looked like I, I would not be getting tenure. Uh, this was, uh, the, which is a very polite way of saying you're, you're going to get fired. <clears throat> and um, I, I wasn't quite sure what to do. Uh, but I did have one thing that I could do. I was able to ask for who I would like to be the chair of my tenure committee at University of Michigan. And I decided that I would go for Larry Bartell, who was not a man I'd ever talked to, but he was the best chemist in the department. And I figured uh, what Professor Bartell thought, that's, that's pretty much what I should go by. And uh, he then organized uh, uh, the, the letters and everything in my tenure, uh, my tenure review and I, and I did get tenure, and I, I, I owe it entirely to Dr. Bartel. He, he had a, a tremendous impish side to him. And uh, the, the second meeting I had with him then was in the middle of my tenure review. He knew that I knew that he was the chair of my committee, and he said to me, uh, he had uh, two tickets to, uh, at the 50-yard line at the, at, at the, at, for a Michigan football game. And would I, would I like to, to go with him? And, and I said, yeah. And then uh, we're, we're at this football game, beautiful fall day. And uh, in the, at halftime, he says to me, he knows some thermodynamic paradoxes. And would I like to hear them? No way I want to hear thermodynamic paradoxes. And certainly not at halftime in a football game. So what did I say to him? Put in chat, what did I say to him? Dr. Bartel, I would love to hear some thermodynamic paradoxes, and I and I, I so then he told me this uh, told me a thermodynamic paradox, and and there I was, everyone's having a great time and relaxed, it's, you know, it's beautiful fall day, and I'm just like, what's what's the answer to this paradox, and so uh, uh, I found that first answer, and, and then he gave me a second paradox. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, I want to hear another paradox, and I, I remember answering that one, and. Uh, and, you know, he was just playing with me. 
you know, he had probably already, yeah, obviously, he already made my mind up that I was okay and that he would like me to stay at Michigan. And uh, the, it, it, he had that same impish side to him that would l cause him to, to ask me about thermodynamic paradoxes at halftime in a Michigan football game. And I, I just can't tell you how much I owe this man. And, and uh, I think I only talked to him maybe one more time after that at another football game that he invited me to. One against Ohio State, which Michigan won. <laughs>